blessing to those around us and we can't use what our status is to say that that makes us better than you guys so even question somebody else's um faith walk and all that we and that's what if you think about the pharisees and Sad, well actually the sadducees were based upon themselves of how they can measure themselves against other people and saying well we're better and so here in the, in this in this second chapter of romans you know so what you got on a 200 hundred dollar watch my watch that's you know eighty dollars just tells tells the same time has the same hand on it that goes around yours and guess what after about four months, you got to change the same battery in your watch as the ones in my watch. And, and every once in a while, the, your hand on your watch falls off. So what you got on $300 shoes? Your $300 shoes wears out just like my little. At some point, guess what happened? You got to replace the heel and the sole on it. Now, I haven't had anything. So, so, so when you start saying, this is how I'm blessed. Well, so what? All right. Your suit caught a little bit better than mine, but I make mine look better. No, I'm just joking. It's just, I'm just, I'm just and so we start talking about how we measure ourselves with other people. It's, it shouldn't be that way. It should be about how God is blessing us. I want to be around blessed people because sooner or later, they'll rub off on you. Every now and then, they'll, teach, they'll take you to lunch or dinner. You know, you be around for some blessed folk who you just hang out with them. Oh, hey, 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 Hicks, you want to go to lunch? Yeah, sure, where you want to go? Wherever you, look, if you treat, I don't care where we go. We just go. I'm gonna treat you to a steak. Okay, I have steak. I'll, I'll take it. I'm not, I'm not much of a steak eater, but I'll, I'll eat it. If you pay for it, look, we, we, we go eat Italian or a Thai or whatever. If you treat, <laughs> so you be around blessed people enough. It, when I say it it, 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 it change who you are. Huh? Oh, I, I'm not hearing anything. That's, that is. No, you heard yeah. Oh. Y'all looking like I was strange. I paused for a second. <laughs> so, so when we start picking up at that fourth verse, the, 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 the mindset is still based upon uh, what God is doing right now. And I kind of said we're going to walk through this Romans uh, for however long how it takes us. So, so if we, I mean, Romans has uh, uh, a lot of meat in it. So as we work through this, uh, this will be, if God lets us, this will be our, our, our Wednesday night study for the year. And if it goes on to two years, that's what we're going to do because Roman has so much information about us being Christian in our challenge of today. And so we'll pick up with that fourth verse. Um, you know, let's do that. Let, so, so we keep the context. Let's back up to that third verse. I know we hit a little bit on that last week, but let's start with that third. So I'm going to read verses three and four just from contextual. We stay in that same mindset as Paul uh, is, is talking to us, not just the Romans, but to us. Since you do the same things as those people you judge, surely you understand that God will punish you too. How could you think you would be able to escape his judgment? For God has been kind to you. He has been very patient, waiting for you to change. But, but you think nothing of his kindness. Maybe you didn't understand that God is kind to you so that you will, you will decide to change your lives. Anybody else read a different version of that? And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, <clears throat> that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? What, what do y'all think about that? What, what comes off the page in both those translations? take y'all to I, you know, this 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 is this is rhetorical you don't have to answer this question what you think about this how long did it take you to change your way for god to recognize who you were and you don't answer a lot but but then we all have to go through some process as god waited on us uh, we said to ourselves well we'll get to god one of these days but when i mean i always think about our rebellious years from the age of 16 to 24 as you knew 
in that time frame, we have the rebellious. And sometimes they stand further than that, sometimes before that. We come to this, this knowledge that we act a certain way. But th th that's not in our physical life. But now in our spiritual life, it's the same way. It's the period where a guy just wait on us. Mm -mm -mm. He just won't get it right. He just won't get it right. And the moment we get it right, we forget what it took for us to get right and start looking at other people. So the third verse was like, you know, watch what you watch what you are saying. You do these things, but when you start looking at other people, realize give them the same time God gave you. This why this why we can be so you know uh, patient. You know, uh, I, I said it and I paused because I had to uh, I had to respond to something, and I typed it up, and I read it a couple of times, and I called my administrator. I said I called and I said, and I'm saying this. Just just read over it. Make sure my he did it. He softened it up a little bit. And so we talked about it for a little bit. He said, you really think that? I said, I know this was going on. And then I responded. And then that person responded back. And I showed, I showed Anthony. He said, you were right. They were thinking that. I said, yeah, that's fine. I'm glad you. I said, but I ain't show you what I just sent them. <laughs> the first time, I had him to kind of soften up a little bit. He was still a little punched, but he softened up a little bit. And so I sent it. Then the next one came. I didn't, I didn't let him see it. I didn't let him see it. And so... I, and I saw showed him respond. He got mad. He said, "Some folk, you know, I'm still trying to get Anthony to be a Christian." <laughs> so, 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 so he think and say things different than I say and think. And he'll, he'll, he'll be very cautious around me and not say those words. But I, I've been around him long enough to know that he would say those words. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> some people didn't mind and that, that. I said, he said, he said, you were so right with what you were saying. I said, and and she showed herself. And I said, but I ain't show you my response. I, I was like, I, I called him. I says. High school rumors, and she got really upset. I says, if you're gonna ever judge my ethics based upon high school rumors, my number is two one four eight five seven twelve twenty. Feel free to call me anytime you want to call me. And so I kind of said that in the email. He softened up the rest of it. I sent it to her. And then she says, well, I don't know about high school rumors, but that what I says, and, I, and she responded back. I says, therein lies the problem. We didn't with executives who listen to down here in these rumors. And and she, her response back after I said that, you 100 percent, 100 percent agree with you. But we had to go through all this for you to agree to us. And, and, and why, why I pause that, it says that we got to work with people on the same, at the same rate as God has worked with us. We got to be very patient with them. And sometimes we not, sometimes we will whisper. But when we deal with other people, man, people will make you hot as fish grease. You're going to get upset with people. But how many times have God been angry with you? Now, and, uh, now people don't think God get angry. Uh, ask the children of Israel, do God get angry? God does, when we do, just like a parent, when we do something crazy and stupid, he gets angry. Now, he's long-suffering, so he don't get the switch immediately. You know, your parents will get the switch, boot, spoon, paddle, <laughs> extension card, whatever's near it, and just wear you out or, or, or respond. And so here he says, as we do this, uh, um, God knowing how good he is, but yet still, we don't always recognize that. Isn't that, isn't that something? That as we step out here, we got to be patient with everybody. And I'm telling you, um, uh, when we start asking God for patience, you know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I never asked God for patience. I asked God for grace, mercy, ability, love. I, I ask all of. But when you ask for God for patience, what? How you get? How do you get patient? You got to go through some stuff that's going to make you. I'm praying for patience. Uh. -uh. I, you know, I know I, I, I might be missing a, a, a key elegant element of, of, of prayer. I tell God to work with me, but I'm not going to, because patience means you got to go through some stuff. You know, Joe, I said the patience of Joe. Joe went through some stuff that I, I promise, I, I'm sorry, I'm not praying for a Job experience. <laughs> and so here, God is very patient with us. We, we, we work through this, and so he goes from, all, all, all the Romans, the first chapter, showing us all these things that as God has blessed us and then we've got to deal with in our way of life. And he starts, starts his chapter over. I hate using chapter. In his next uh, subtopic, he talks about the judgment of God and how we are to receive and how we are to proceed with it. And not from a judgment of destruction, but how does God judge us? How patient is God with us? How much the stuff we wag our finger at other people about, how much, how much stuff are we are talking about? I always says that Yo, what's in your closet is different than the other people, but you do got a closet. I, I would say, you know, people, you know, talk about people who smoke. They, they should not smoke, they should not, but you go home and have a glass of wine every. Well, you actually have more than one glass. You have several glasses of wine every. 
night. Yeah, I heard. I heard myself. Every. Oh, that was, that was, it's, it's, oh, it's me. It's, it's me talking to me in my head, but it's out loud. <laughs> and so, oh, I know what it is. They, they were watching that on Sunday, so they didn't turn it off. Okay, we're not going crazy. We, we, it's there. But, but the stuff we judge people on, but we don't even look at our own selves. And so you gotta be careful that you're not always throwing stones at other people. That's the kind of thing when I preach. I preach about everything. Preach about what I'm going through, what you're going through, all this stuff, and it just comes natural when you preach when you're not trying to guard yourself against, well, I want to say this, I want to do this, I want, hey, we're going to be truthful. And this way it says, when you start out this judgment part, the judge is not that you're condemning anybody. It's you really saying that all this stuff is sin, and only by the grace of God and the love he has for us are we able to obtain and grow from there. Once we learn that, that, that patience comes along, because you see people mess up, you just look here, understand, Hey, we trying to get better. We trying to do these things, and so, uh, so, so that, that that's what we talking about here. And as we go into this, the third and fourth chapter, um, as we look at uh, I'm gonna ask this question: What's the one thing when it comes to sin that drives? What, what, what's the sin that drives us the craziest? Say that again. What's the sin that drives us the craziest? Sin that we commit, or is it somebody just, else? I can't stand a liar. That's my biggest thing, too. But now you should feel pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we okay with murder. We okay with stealing. We okay with all this. We okay with all. Now, I, I, if we look at the book of Levit Leviticus, all the stuff that's out there, everything that he says we shouldn't do. I mean, Leviticus is, we have more than 10 laws. You know, the, 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 yeah. the Ten Commandments thing. I said, no, we got all this stuff. And every, every one of y'all who spoke, now I'm not, the other y'all rest on this field, they said, everyone who spoke, one, two, three, four, all said lie. But that becomes the sin that's most familiar to yeah. like you, closer to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't know any murder. No. <laughs> I do. You try to like it. Not me. Jesus says, even if you said with your mouth, you killed somebody, so. Mm -hmm. We, we murder everybody a lot. When mm. I, when I, when I, I know my mind was, was on that. Y'all got to pray for me because I had a lot of stuff to say to somebody and I just didn't say it. But, 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 okay, okay. So how do we deal with a liar? Since that's what the majority of y'all, you rest y'all remain silent. I, 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 actually, it was five. I'm going I'm to let uh, Brother Ray add into that lie too. So yeah. I'm going to say five, five, out of, five out of 11 said that was it. So that's the majority. Of so, so, so when we start dealing with that, uh, how, you, how how to be patient with a liar? Because because you know you, you already recognize a lie already. Yeah. Even though they think they're getting away with it, you need to think myself. Yeah. 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 So when you sit there and listen to it though, you know, you're like, you can listen to it. You be patient. You say you know what you know. In all honesty. I know you didn't really do that. <laughs> you just I, call know, them out. I know you're not doing that. Call them out, fam. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't just let it. That's, that's what I do. So I'll ask a question and give them the opportunity to confirm that I know they're <laughs> And then once they confirm that they lie, I, I just say, you know, that's a lie. You know, that's going to be the one lie that's going to get you. I said, you didn't have to do that. So isn't it good to ask for patience in that situation? Yeah, patient with not getting rid of the person. You know, you know, it's it's like if we say homosexual girls are crazy, we don't we, we don't we don't we don't we don't destroy the homosexual. We let them know that you know that lifestyle is never right, not really right. And as long as you know where you stand, you can still be cordial with them. You can still be whatever, as long as they know where you stand. Mm -hmm. and, and so and so, that I'm not gonna mistreat you. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna destroy the person. You know, you know, man. I'm with you on that. You have to let them know where you stand. But I think you have to be a little bit more diplomatic than I was the other day. Oh. I was talking to this lady. She had made an order, and she was talking about her wife. And we finished the conversation. I, you know, I thought, but I never hung my phone. Because <laughs> I'm driving. I just never reached over here. And I was like, oh, my gosh. She said the biggest lie to say, oh, why I'm going to hell? <laughs> I'm like, hell, I'm going to be full. <laughs> and then I realized. And I had to hold my phone up. So when I said that, I said, 
the guy out to do the job. He, 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 he said she asked him as soon as she opened the door, are you the one that I'm talking to on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said no. She, so she just, uh, obviously she was recording the conversation. She played it back to him. And she said, uh, is your boss a businessman? And uh, he said, by the way, he is. And she said, well, that must be why he was condemning this. <laughs> Now you can't condemn people to hell. <laughs> to hell. I just went off. I mean, it just it threw me. Remember, we, 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 we can be blunt, we can be fr- but we cannot hate the sin, but not the person. Because we all remember, we all live in a corruptible body, and in the moment we become the biggest hypocrites. Uh, that's what I'm saying. When I, when, I, when I speak, I'm not speaking that against people. I'm speaking that. Hey, this goes for me too. This this is my this is my this is my deal. This is our deal. This is something that we all are pressing towards the mark of. And so you're right. Me can't me I, I know sometimes the flesh will get a hold of us and we will but I, and I don't think I think me and George were talking about something about once you do something, the hardest thing to do is to go back and ask for forgiveness. And that's why you don't want to do it because when you go back, even if you're standing right but you what you're uh, crushing people, hardest part is to go back and say, you know what? I could handle that differently. I couldn't do what I mean. I, I didn't mean that way. This is what I meant to say. And, and one of my, like I said, use myself as an example. I went to I said, "This is not towards you. Uh, I'm not con- condemning you. It's just the idea that we need to be able to handle rumors better, especially at an executive level." Yeah. And she agreed 100. percent You just can't. If I let all the rumors and the stuff to affect me, I will be judging everybody. And so, and so here we just really got to be patient, even being direct, but be patient. And sometimes you gotta be direct. Sometimes, you know, um, uh, I, I know, I know, uh, I'm not as direct as to be. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta be direct. Sometimes you, it's a way of doing it. So you gotta be able to do both of it. So, but here, he's really trying to be impatient with how we deal with um, other things because the idea is to lead them to repentance. And, and think about yourself. Even if you're wrong, and someone attacked you, what's what's your what, what's your response? You're going to attack back. And husband, wives, y'all, uh, if y'all, when, when y'all get attacked, y'all can be wrong because I don't know what. And you're going to just fire back. Mm-hmm. I ain't been in your house, but I've been married for 25 years. <laughs> I can be wrong because I don't know what. And y'all can be like, oh, oh, wait a minute, hold up. You should, and next thing you know, in your head, you think, I'm just so wrong. I know I'm wrong. I know. But she attacked you. So it's vice versa. You can be wrong, but, but you're going to. So, so he says, we would ideas lead them to repentance. Now, if she comes and says, now, babe, now you know what you did wasn't like that. And, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. But she comes and says, la, 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 you, you've done it before. She, I mean, they've said, without you, it, it depends on what kind of mood you're in. You know, I'm, I'm just saying. But the idea is to lead them to repentance. And that's the key of verse 4. He says, all that we do, we're trying to lead them to repentance. And the more you push people in a corner, the more they want to come right out. Even if they're wrong, the more you push them, the more they're going to fire back. And that's why I think Christians have lost it because we're, we're adamant about you, you're you wrong, you did this. And, and instead of saying, okay, yeah, you're wrong, here's where to do it, you know, let's come together. And and, and, and I think we've got the idea that that's weak. So we say, no, no, my whole goal is to lead them to repentance. The idea is for everybody to recognize who God is, that we we do it the right way, then we can bring people to us. Because a lot of stuff, if people are lying to you, man, you can get, get fired up, especially all those who said they were wrong. Fired up! Are you ready to go at them? And, and y'all other ones who didn't mention y'all saying whatever that sin is that kind of push you to the, to the level, we got to learn how we walk through that. So that on the other side, it leads them to repentance. I mean, remember, repentance is what? Not just asking for forgiveness, but not re- repeating what just took place. Repentance, d- to not repeat. And so sometimes I always tell people, stop apologizing and start repenting. Because apologizing says, I'm sorry for that. I'm, I'm really sorry that you caught that. Mm-hmm. So I'm apologizing that you caught that. Mm-hmm. Repentance says, I'm sorry I did it and I'm trying to do it again. But apology says, <laughs> yeah, I got just I got caught. <laughs> I apologize for doing that. And your mind saying, but next time I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. 
Um, let, let's jump right into verse 5 and 6. 5 and 6. Uh, verse 5 and 6. Because you don't store it up, so you don't know how it overflows. <laughs> 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 you don't know how it overflows. <laughs> 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 you don't know how it 
No, and you said the good word, tactful. That's why I was trying to, that, that, that's a very good word, tactful, because we can say it, but be tactful. I think I said something else, but, yeah. but when you say it, you can be direct, but have that tactfulness that you're not destroying them when you say it. So that's a very good word, tactful. So it, can I, can I uh, insert the correct word? Yes, yeah, baby. You, 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 Assertiveness is what we want to be, because aggressive is like too rough, probably yeah. too direct. <clears throat> Like it's still different flavors of being aggressive. Say what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> but, no, but that, see, that, that's that, that's the conversation piece. Is that we can actually, at, at, when we first started this chapter here, now applying it, the application part, we can see it that what he's saying is what we, uh, the two sides of the coin, and but both sides has its has its good points and its bad points, and we gotta learn how to uh, be assertive. In everything we do, and don't let it build up or don't let it spill out. I mean, so now we just balance ourselves to be the light. And so, and so as he, he says, as we as, as we go through this process, there's this building part, and we will be challenged. I mean, that's that's why he comes out so strong in chapter one to lay the foundation for all the stuff that we got to deal with. But then he said, in dealing with that, and 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 he built. Remember, he builds a case. If you think about any drama. They, they, they lay down the evidence. You know why you're here. You're doing these things. And, and, and here are the, the circumstances going along with it. But here's some stuff you need to look at as you, as you start to evaluate this. Here, here's two sides of it. It, it. it just lays it out. Maybe I'm not watching too much Law and Order and PD, Fire and PD. And just kind of, but but when, when you see he, how he lays it out, he starts showing you all the pieces. And, and, and on the trial, all the information is coming out. Now we have to be able to look at all of the pieces. And so, somebody had to hand that one. I didn't want to miss anybody. Uh, yes. I know we, we're looking for patience here, but is there a place when, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to be the light, you're doing everything that you can to bring them to the light, but it just appears that they really don't want to. Okay, let, 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 <clears throat> now that I'm going to avoid the question, Let's read ahead. Let's read verses 7, 8, and 9. 7, 8, and 9. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Now, ask your question. Well, go ahead, read, read, easy read, and ask your question. I want to see it, show you how it is. Seven, eight, and nine. Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Some people live for God's glory, for honor, and for life that cannot be destroyed. They live for those things by always continuing to do good. Stop there. What was your question? <laughs> no, no, I want, I want you well, to say my question was, was is that does the point come when, I mean, you know, you, you come to the, to the determination that they don't want the life. And, and, can't and make that determination. Can make a determination, though. Because we don't know who's going to be changed. Right. So you, you keep being who you are, and it will, you continue to do good. But but who you do good with, that there's a point where Jesus says you can't cast your pearls onto swine. There's limitations. He says you gotta be, you gotta be wise in everything you do. So so don't keep giving good to bad. And so we make the determination is that uh, so there is a point where we, we we have to recognize. If I keep talking to just to one person all the time and I gotta be able to say they're consuming all my time, and all my energy. I can't get to number two, three, and four because this person is. And at some point, I say, look here, you gotta find God. I'm in you with this. And it's my last little time. <coughs> You can either find Jesus as your savior. Right now, you look for me to be your savior, you're looking for something in the world to be your savior. And as long as you're doing that, you can't see God. And then you gotta, you know, as he told the, the disciples, take the dust off your feet and go on to the next one. So, so, so our idea is that we never stop doing good, but we start recognizing that we can't, we can't spend all our time doing good to one person, one thing. You, know, you can try to save one person all your life and miss out on the other ten people that could have been saved. So, so there are some times that we don't ever stop doing good. We just stop. We just move our good around. So that's why I want you. I want you to see that idea of that. That the question is that, you know. Even when we stumble, even when we fall, we gotta, we gotta get immediately back up and start doing good. Sometimes we can stumble and stay down for so long that God said, "Look here, you you you, you remember how uh, how uh, Joshua? He, he kept telling Joshua, okay, Moses is dead.'" This is day. This is day three. You know, he was doing. I told you already. This is day seven. You still have more price time for you to get up. There's a process by which we, we, we even when you stop.
stumble. You gotta get up and keep on going. Or something bad, bad, bad happens. You gotta keep on going. You gotta keep on getting up and moving forward. And I say that. So, so long story short, he gives the idea to continue to do good. But even after you're doing good, God will take care of the stuff that's going wrong. And, and so, and so, verses eight, nine says, when the, God will deal with the people who are doing evil, our God, our goal is to receive eternal life is to continue to do what God wants us to do. And verse nine says. There will come some trials and tribulations for those people. As good as they, they think they have it, you know, we see we see we see the outward of it. That people are living their own lifestyle, hooping it up and hollering it up, and we thinking, man, they're just living. But but we don't see, you know, I can put a good front for in front of people. Right. Think about what you were going through. While you were going through in front of folks, yeah, 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 you go home and like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Can't sleep, can't, you know, can't get comfortable, can't just worried about everything. Worry about not going to do it. Worry about so. But when in front of people, I would show you a whole lot of stuff. It says there will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil. And those people are always worried about somebody taking over, somebody going this. Is, there's no rest for them. I was I was trying to tell young people. It says don't 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 get caught up in the memorization of drug dealers on TV because you don't see them to retire. They either, they either die in jail, and I guess that jail is a forced retirement. But but they, there, there's no retirement. But there's no you, you don't you don't see you know an old person. Old drug dealer. <laughs> 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 well, you might sit behind they might they might get old bitches, but, but but don't get TV glamorized and they they got all going on. There there's heartache and pain behind that. What they saw in show real life is how they live. They can't sleep because they're so afraid that either cops come or that because they don't get them. Scared of, scared of everything that happened. So, 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 so when we look at that, that, that's why the next verse talks about it. I like this first. First, when he says Jews and Gentiles, I never try to change the word up. The Jews were those who, who God first revealed himself to. And the Gentiles were next. So he always says that first the Jews because they had God first. And so why it comes to the first because they had a relationship since the beginning of time that was the Jews. Then you had the Gentiles coming later. So I say now, first to the Christians who know better. And then to the Gentiles who know better. And so this to me lays down the foundation of those in the church. You got to make sure you got it right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, it's kind of along the lines of what Reverend Edison was asking. So then, for the Christians, I, I'll just use myself for an example. I get to the point to where if you tell somebody something and they keep doing the same thing, then I eventually just kind of stop fooling with you. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm just, I'm done. Is that wrong to do that? It's wrong if you stop doing it to everybody. Okay. So, so you know what I'm saying? Because we get so frustrated with one person, mm -hmm. and, and people do this. Well, I tried, I ain't doing it anymore. They go speak to one person and share, share the word with them, and they get you know turned off, turned away. Okay, God did my one, and I'm done. I, I'm never witness nobody ever because the one time I did. So when He says His idea to continue to do good, the idea that we stop doing because we will. God knows us. When if you got trying to get a kid to sell something, they gonna tell him. The first person tell him no. They think in that room. Well, yeah, I, I tried, Mom. I tried one for we tried. I tried Miss Glory next door. What about that? I ain't go next door. I came home. I, I I got turned down one time. You know, how many times? How many times did your husband or wife turn you down before you gave up? Most y'all didn't give up because y'all married now. And so, and so, and so I, I, I only have a one couple in here together. Everybody else is kind of that other is not here, so y'all y'all can't say that. I'll, I'll use that for some. <laughs> I, 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 I'm saying, I, you know, I said this on site, so I don't know how I said it. Um, but yeah, you, you're right. The idea, as a matter of fact, read, read verse 10, and we'll conclude with verse 10. Look at verse 10. But glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, the Jews first and also the Greeks. Uh, 11. God, for God does not show favoritism. And what they said, it says, you know, for evil, they do all this, and God will show uh, his wrath unto the evil that do evil. 
But our thing is that as long as we continue to do good, who everyone does good. And I like why he says that because he does not say everyone who's present. Everyone who is out sin. Everyone who don't have a problem. Everyone who don't have a situation. Everyone who and this is why I think Christians get it mixed up. It says that when we become Christian, we become perfect and this stop <coughs> lying to folk by saying that you're perfect. Mm -hmm. Stop lying to folk. You know, Rev, I ain't so, but you walk around like you don't um, I don't wanna say something. Y'all know what I was gonna say. Oh my god, y'all y'all Christian folk. I see y'all like no, I'm just joking. But that's but you know a lot of Christian people that like you said, they think they're perfect because they're Christians, but then they expect other people to be as perfect as them too. And and that's the whole thing in, in evangelizing and trying to win people to Christ is if you if you don't go to the center of the thing, you just surround yourself with, you know, people that are supposed to be as holy as you, then and, and, and the mark. I was I wish I could just I wish I wasn't recording this because I I, I I wanna record it, but I would say something, but you know. I don't know how this will come off right. Um, but when you were dating, you made sure that you didn't you didn't want to do anything around that person. You 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 wouldn't go to their bathroom, you wouldn't do anything. You would make sure you want them to make, know that you're perfect. Because you're trying to put on an air about whatever. You 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 you'll go you go twenty blocks in the house just use the bathroom and come back and say, well, I thought you had to go, no, I, I had to go run and do an errand and come back. And you you get up out the bus over because you want to go right over there somewhere. Because you want to point this air that <laughs> and the first time it happened, oh we <laughs> but, but the idea is if, if we could be just so open that I don't always do the right thing. Does that mean it's the wrong church for you? It is the wrong church for me then because I'm not I'm not perfect. I got issues, I got problems, but I think that with connection people says that we're on a journey together. I am trying my best every day to get it right. And Jesus has said here, no, nowhere in your translation say, for he who is hurt, <clears throat> he without sin. He said, what? That we keep on trying to do good. Because guess what? You're saved by grace. You're saved by grace. So grace says, I'm going to save you even though I know you're going to mess up. <laughs> I'm going to save you even though I know you got spots all over you. I'm going to save you. But in saving you, I want you to keep doing what's good. Because I want people to see your light and say, why are you, Sister Ray, still doing good? Why are you still? Because it's a Jesus in me. And that's what I say. I know you got to have Jesus in you because ain't no way I could do what you do. Mm. Ain't no way, Bobby, I can do what you did. But I, man, I would, I would, ooh, I would, I would talk, talk, and we walked out like this, but you <laughs> did something. I, now, they might say, oh, Bobby, you weak. That's fine. Because guess what? I ain't trying to press none of y'all. I'm just trying to get to heaven. I'm just trying to get to heaven. Because that's eternity. This stuff right here, guess what? As soon as I leave this job, they're going to have an announcement that lasts on the board for 21 days. They're going to interview by 6 7 folk. And before the end, I'm going to have my seat in the same seat, mm -hmm. doing the same job I'm doing, and probably doing better. We're mm -hmm. so afraid. They might be right now. So what? He did that? Man, that dude y'all had before, he wasn't this smart. <laughs> I don't know how he was doing it. I've got my grace of God. Man, I'm going to testify. By the grace of God, I'm still standing. That is the end of it all. He says, so, so, so this is where your question is, we, we might stop on an individual, but we never stop. Because we, I promise you, we would. If God said just talk to one person <laughs> your entire life, the first five minutes we were Christian, we were friends five. The first person we ran to and talked and said, Jesus, I'm done. Sign me up. <laughs> For the next train to heaven, because I've done my job. I did my one good deed. Y'all wonder that? If God said only one person? Shoot. Shoot. I talked to him, him, him. I got three, so, so just in case, I got two extra. <laughs> just in case, I needed some extra. <laughs> and so here, he said, he said, he said we got to keep doing it. Um, and I, what I like, to, like about this, it doesn't matter how successful you are or how unsuccessful you are because God sees your effort. And the idea that for God does not show favoritism, 
he doesn't reward the person just talked to to 20 people in one hour. He doesn't, well, matter of fact, um, uh, oh, what, what, what is, um, oh, right my mind went blank just then. Um, um, <coughs> there was a, the American pastor. He, um, I always had the people coming in. He always did this great revival and all that. He just died not too long ago. Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Thank you. I don't know why Billy Graham mind this. He does, he does, he does, he's not going to compare little bitty Reverend Alton A. McKin Alton, Alton R. McKinley to Billy Graham. Because if he would do that, I'm, I'm going home. Billy Graham had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people in all kinds of languages coming down and, and accepting Jesus Christ. So if he says that's a standard, if that was a standard, if God says, well, I will only show favor to that person, lock the doors, turn off the lights. But he said, I don't show favoritism. My grace is sufficient. Whomever or whoever you are, if you do these things. And that's God's judgment in, 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 in the package. He says, I'm not, I'm not forceful, nor do I am, am I uh, passive aggressive. Nor do I look at this or look at this. Just keep doing good. And if nothing else, just keep doing good. I don't, I, don't, I don't care how much money you give, but that's part of you being doing good. I want you to let your light so shine that other people can, 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 can see um, Jesus in us. Okay, that's we'll pick up with, uh, remember next next week is, is, is uh, spring break. Um, next week is spring break. So we won't meet next week. So we'll pick up with... Um, um, we, um, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll back up to 11 a little bit just to get started, but we'll actually look at, I can tell you the verse we'll look at, we'll look at 12 through, we'll try to get through 12 through uh, 19, but I'm kind of long, 12 through 20, uh, but I, we'll, we'll see how they get along with it because they kind of tie together. So we'll look at that next week, um, uh, not keep saying next week, in two weeks from tonight. Today is the six, so we met back on the twentieth. Uh, anybody want to come a little early? We are starting to put the bags together. Uh, we we really just trying to get as many bags we can put together uh, before we start going out, and we want to start delivering those bags sometime. Uh, looking like the weather will start changing in our favor towards the end of the month, and so we want to start. Uh, I have all the maps and put them up, and and we'll walk through that. But uh, and it won't be. There'll be some set times, but even if you just want to swing by on a day and just take a few and just mark off, mark off the streets that you're at so you won't have repeats. And so we'll have all of those posted in the in the break room. Probably start in a couple of weeks and just post it. Um, when y'all come from spring break, we'll have it there. Remember, all ministry leaders meeting on the 16th. I know some people might be out for spring break, but on the 16th at 10 a.m. Uh, here at the church. March 16th, 10 a.m., right before Couples in Christ, and right after the minister's meeting. So, 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 trying to get everybody to be here for that. And just, just, we hadn't had one this year, so we want to just hammer out some stuff. I want to, once a quarter, meet with all the leaders and tell them where we are, uh, what our plans are, some happenings with some of the things that we are doing, and and all that, so so that's what we want to be be about on March the 16th. And I think it was on the email that went out, but we'll continue to do that announcement on Sunday, and then hopefully we'll have a good turn on the 16th. Let us pray. A great blessing to come right now. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you how you continue to watch over us and keep us on the phone. Let me just pray as we leave this place that you guide us and um, on our footsteps. Watch over us on the phone. Let me pray that you help us to be the people you call us to be on the phone. Help us to walk through our circumstances. Help us to see that it's all about showing everybody who you are in us, whether we are passive aggressive or whether we're aggressive, whether we are assertive or whatever you are. Help us to use uh, these scriptures tonight to pr pr propel us into a new light, a new circumstance, a new situation for those who are around us, that they may see your light in us and glorify your name. Now, Lord, we pray for those who are sick and children. We pray for those who are traveling. Pray for those who will be traveling next week on the phone. We pray for those who will be spring breaking. Whether at our church or any church on the phone. We just pray uh, 
Spring break is a very dangerous time for those who will be traveling, those who are in different places. We pray you open, watch over our young adults, not just ours, but all young adults, that you will allow them to have a safe break as well as a safe return back to their different places. We pray for even our young students who have been working. Uh, give them a renewed spirit to return back to school and, and finish out the next, uh, the last half of the year uh, with, with a strong finish on the We just pray that you continue to bless while that friendship is in our life so shine in this community so that people will see our light and glorify you. Our prayer in the Sunday we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I got to go home and do the financials, and so I won't be able to stay for choir rehearsal. Uh, I, need to, I need to turn some financials in in the morning.